lowest learner, you know, uh, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. She gives a statement uh, before Congress where she claims innocence, she knew nothing, she did nothing wrong, blah, blah, blah. And then when she's questioned, she says, I take the fifth. Well, you blew it. You, uh, you already made a statement. So many, many, many legal scholars say she has no right to take the fifth anymore. That's why she was held in contempt. That's why uh, another committee in Congress last week recommended to um, uh, the Justice Department see criminal charges against her. Now, we have the good folks at Judicial Watch um, who have been chipping away at, uh, at this uh, from the beginning, freedom of information, uh, you know, FOIA requests, they've gotten some more emails, and they show, according to a story in Human Events, that tax-exempt uh, organizations, uh, Director Lois Lerner was talking to, guess who? Guess who she was talking to? Well, previous emails already re released have indicated that she was talking to um, Elijah Cummings. But we're going to go to a Congressman uh, Marsha Blackburn right now. Hello, Congressman. Hi, how are you? Good, good to talk to you again. Thanks for you joining too. us. Sure. All right, let me, let me, let me start with some uh, breaking news, which you may or may not be aware of. Judicial Watch, through a FOIA request, uh, has uh, gotten a hold of emails um, that indicate that Lois Lerner um, wanted to sick the Justice Department on some of those targeted conservative groups that uh, the IRS was scrutinizing and uh, that she was also trying to get the FEC, the Federal Elections Commission, where she used to work, to, uh, to scrutinize those groups as well. Uh, if this is the case, would you be surprised? Well, it would be disappointing. I will say that. And it shows a complete disregard for uh, the ethics and integrity of what they are sworn to do and supposed to do with the IRS. It's supposed to be an independent agency free of political pressures and implications. And what we have seen is that they have gone about politicizing lots of agencies, whether it is CMS or HHS or the EPA or the IRS or Fish and Wildlife, you name it. Look at the amount of overreach and inappropriate activity that has taken place by taking the federal government and using it as a weapon against our fellow citizens. And we're seeing it across the board. Yeah, well, absolutely. I, I also want to ask you um, uh, about uh, the report today that uh, Kathleen Sebelius is considering running uh, for the U.S. Senate from the state of Kansas. Uh, could, you, could you imagine that in your wildest dreams or nightmare? I cannot imagine that she would think that she can go back to Kansas after, as she said, she was responsible for the debacle of the healthcare.gov rollout. I cannot imagine saying, I'm going to put my name on the ballot. That would be a seat that a Republican would certainly win. Yeah, without a doubt. I want you to hear a, a soundbite. Uh, this is the soundbite. This is from Bob. This is Bob Schieffer on uh, Face the Nation this past Sunday uh, asking a question. Uh, uh, and uh, you, you might have heard this. Uh, you, I'm sure you did. Here it is. Let me ask you about this sure. uh, debate over equal pay for women. Sure. Uh, there was a lot of uh, debate on, on that last <laughs> week. Finally, Republicans blocked it in the Senate. Uh, are Republicans against equal pay for women? And is that going to be a good political issue in these coming midterm elections? You know, I find this war on women rhetoric just almost silly. It is Republicans that have led the fight for women's equality. Go back through history and look at who was the first woman to ever vote, elected to office, go to Congress. But why, did, why did the uh, Senate Republicans well, then block this? All right. Now, I, I've seen that woman before. Uh, <laughs> you did a great job with you did a great job with Bob, but you know a fairer question would have been, uh, Congressman, why where does the White House get the chutzpah to talk about a war on women when it comes to equal pay when they pay 88 cents per dollar, and in defense of that, the White House gives a defense which totally obliterates the whole nonsensical argument of women getting paid less than men in the first place. Oh, I know. They said, well, they don't have as big a job. Uh, you know, how insulting is that? And the way they have handled this, they're trying to politicize it. And 
I, I think that what we have to continue to go back and look at it is Republicans and conservatives that repeatedly try to focus on making the American dream available to everybody, every single person. It does not matter. It should be equal opportunity for all. And that is what we believe. And when you come in here and you look at some of the rhetoric that, that the Democrats have used about let us give you this, that, and the other, you know what? I don't want the federal government giving me things because what they give us, they can take away. And I would rather have opportunity and an opportunity to do something than to have the federal government say we're going to let you do this or we're going to mandate employers to do this give me a level playing field give me equal access give me the opportunity to go in there and and prove my worth you know i've always enjoyed being able to work on commission and the reason i liked working on commission was because i felt like it was a better way for me to write my own paycheck and uh, of course, uh, you know th this this nonsense about the war on women, which is uh, one of the uh, roads they're going down between now and November. They're reigniting this, is so ridiculous. When in fact, the war on women is being perpetrated by Barack Obama, not only with this with the phony statistics in the White House, where the women make 88 cents on the dollar, if you want to go there, but the workforce. The so women are, leave, are 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 underrepresented in the workforce now. They're, they're 130,000 fewer women in the workforce month to month in the last numbers that came out. And if you look at the, re the total uh, percentage of women in the workforce, it's, much, it's way down under Barack Obama. That's the war on women. Absolutely it is. The way the Obama economy has treated women with a lower labor force participation rate than we have had in modern times, with lower employment numbers, with wage stagnation, with health care costs going through the roof, with employers being shut down, with people being, because of EPA violations, with people being moved to a full-time work week being called 30 hours, and women are having to go get two jobs. I was in the grocery store the other day, and a lady with children came up, and we were talking, and she All right, said Congre that she Congresswoman, I'm sorry, we're, we're, up, we're up against a hard break, but listen, thank you for joining us. We'll speak to you soon. Absolutely, anytime. And, uh, thank a, you. A, a, a Appreciate it. Congressman, uh, uh, Mar uh, Congressman Blackburn, ladies and gentlemen, here, we'll when we come back, the panel, and if you want to know who's on it, you got to stick around, because I'm not going to tell you.